Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Today I thought I'd walk you through this painting here. A uh, bunch of fun colors, some zebras. So yeah, I'll walk you through the process. If you're interested in following along, you can. Otherwise, just watch and hopefully you can learn something today. All right, you guys. So for this, we're gonna be combining two separate pictures. So uh, photo references. So um, mostly because my wife suggests she really liked the tree. So I'm just going to also our internet is having a lot of issues so i'm kind of <laughs> i'm using a thumbnail because that's the only thing that can load or is still loaded from before um from when i had my internet open so that's fine it'll be enough so i'm just doing this tree just kind of gonna take up a big part of the, this is kind of that hanging down limb, split branches. So this is gonna take up a big part of the frame. And then shadow area down here. So then take a look at the other picture. So the other picture, we're gonna put in the horizon line. Um, about here. Got my eraser. Just want to clean that up. Not the best line in the world I've ever drawn. All right, something like that. So then we have our um, zebras, which I do have that picture loaded. So I've got, you know what, I might just, I think I'm just going to take out one of the zebras and leave it with, leave us with two total. Well, that's a bad idea because I've heard everything. Never do even numbers, that's what I've been told. So maybe we'll go back on that and do all three. It's just that the two are so close together, you can almost not see them. I uh, have very, in general, specifically avoided like horses and horse-like animals um, because there's so many kind of like curves on them and I just, they're just so hard. Um, whereas like, I don't know, I feel cows and things like that, animals that have a, tend to have a bit Maybe, you know, it's their spots and things that they're kind of larger shapes, but horses, it's like, I don't know. They scare me. But I mean, there's people who love drawing horses. So if you are one of those people and you're watching this, kudos to you. You are a special breed. I know lots of horse lovers, but like, yeah, I like the idea of horses. I'm not I'm kind of a wuss when it comes to big animals. I'm like a, you know, cats and dogs, mostly cats kind of guy. And those big animals kind of, I'm just not used to them. Went and helped a guy out on a farm, had a bunch of cows and stuff, and it was cool, I liked it, but I definitely realized like, wow, I'm not used to being around animals that are, that are big. And, you know, they have a mind of their own, and it's just kind of freaky. All right, um, do a bit of this. widen that up a little bit. I always feel bad for you guys watching at the drawing stage just because I feel like I go back so many times fixing things up and then you know the, the first line is never right but as much as I feel bad um, 
you know, it's reality. It's unfiltered, so at least you know that if this is how you end up having to draw as well, you're not alone. I'm with you. Right, I'm not putting stripes on, well, I'll put like a, whoop. Yeah, that's why I'm not putting them on. I'll just do them in watercolor when we get to that. You don't need to know where the stripes are gonna go. They'll do themselves in some to some degree. So uh, I don't know if we want these trees, I'll put, put them in, you know, I think they're, yeah, let's not, not this one. I, you know, in, if, if we were just using the one photo reference, the trees are nice. I think I'll maybe I'll put one in here, kind of in the distance. But when we already have this and then those, kind of frames it nicely already. So then this is kind of where those bush things will go. We'll try to put a bit of a change in. Um, What's it called? A variety in the grass. So that should be good. And just see if there's any other details that we need. Probably not. Shadow. Yeah, this is all gonna be dark. All right, I think we'll get into painting. Okay, so for the painting for the sky, the sky in the, both the references are is quite gray. Uh, you can see my blue, my ultramarine blue is almost empty. I keep putting off filling it up. Uh, so to start off, I'm just going to spray up my paints, wet them a bit. Um, I'm using, this is my, oops, sorry, 14 Escoda Ultimo. Um, but whatever, your big, your big brush. And I think I'm just going to, I don't really want to leave super strong lines by the tree, but I also don't want the whole tree to be sky. So it'll be a bit interesting. We'll just work around. I just want some of these spots to show through, kind of go like that. Cause then we can work around those areas. Cross. All right, I'm gonna get probably the last ultramarine that I can get from here. Very sorry, I, norm I, I really should have filled this up a long time ago, but I just keep saying, yeah, the next painting, I'll, like between the next painting, and then I go to paint and I'm like, oh man, still haven't filled it up. So welcome to my forgetful personality. Okay, it's very bleedy. All right, I'm just gonna wipe my brush off. So I'm just rinsing it with water and then dabbing the, dabbing the paint off on my nice filthy rag. And I'm just picking that water up by the branch so it's not all so crazy messy. And make sure that I get these spots in here that I put some blue in. Yes, should be great. I don't want these edges to be super hard. That would probably be fine. Okay, so now we're going to put in the, um, what's it called? The like bush line or whatever. So for that, I'm going to take some orange. 
I'll just put it in here. I know that's like messy already. It's got grays and stuff in there, but that's fine. Some red. Uh, this is burnt sienna. Um, and I think I'll just kind of vary that. Maybe a little bit of um, yellow ochre. And we'll just putting in a bit more orange. I want to just bring in a bit of variety as we go along. Yellow ochre, maybe a bit of raw umber. It's kind of that brown. Orange, probably too much orange, that's okay. Raw umber again. Okay, um, I think I'll just add in a little bit of ultramarine, some raw umber just to bring some darkness in some spots. Okay. maybe a couple more pops of color so yellow ochre that is not super colorful orange that should be good let that dry might just clean up the bottom edges here and actually I'm just realizing like there is some grass that's kind of um, closer up so instead of letting it dry I might just pick up some of this edge and then I think we'll just go right into the yellow ochre now. We'll just go like this and let that blend. Probably should be switching to a bit of a smaller brush. This one just carries a lot of water and I'm just seeing that it's, it's a, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little bit too much water in my mixes, but I'll just, I like using a big brush, so I think I'll just adjust, you know, to putting in a bit more color as I go, a bit more pigment rather than switching brushes. Okay, so we're going to work around the zebras. And need to make sure we are bringing in color variety. So this is orange. And then down here is about where I'm going to spray. <sighs> That's a little dangerous. So I'm just spraying the bottom. Try not to get the zebras themselves. Just go like that. Down here. There we go. Do want to make sure I don't leave white spaces in places that they're not supposed to be. Okay. There we go. All right. Now we need to bring in some, make sure we have this variety. So we're going yellow. There is like little spots of green. So I'm just using um, sap green and kind of popping that in in some places. That's probably too much, but that's okay. We'll blend it like that. Yellow ochre. Orange. Wow. Wowzers. And this is actually, this is all gonna be in that shadow area. So, um, don't need to worry about it too much. I'm just going to put in a bit more green, some spots. But again, this brush has a lot of water on it. So you can see here, I put some green in and it was just running away with everything else. So I needed to adjust, adjust the way I'm painting, put a little bit of less water, you know, stop dipping my, my brush so often in the water so that have a little more pigment on the brush. Okay. I'm gonna put some burnt sienna in. 
get some red. If we put it in while it's still wet, it'll kind of bleed nicely. Raw umber. Okay. All right, so I let this dry a tiny bit, but just realizing like this is probably dry enough for us to deal with the tree. Definitely need to switch because what if I use this brush, I'll end up putting way too much water in here. We'll get uh, blooms all over the place, those cauliflower blooms. So switching to my uh, silver black velvet, which holds like enough water to be quite useful, but um, little enough to be, you know, to be nice, not overpowering. So uh, I think I'll start out here and we will put some branches in. So I'm trying to, this is a kind of raw umber, a little bit of yellow ochre. I just kind of want that lighter yellowy brown kind of feel. Not going to worry too much about the the foliage at this point. And actually, I have not really thought about how we're going to do the foliage because it's kind of two options. We can do like like this, right, where there's it's going to be a lot of edges. I don't think I want to do that. Uh, maybe in a few spots, I want probably the majority of it to be wet and wet. And then if it is going to be wet and wet. Um, then yeah, I'm going to have to spray it. And then if that's the case, I'm gonna have to wait till most of the other stuff is dry so it doesn't go and wreck the sky. So I've just put in some, um, ultramarine in here to add some dark. And I'm just kind of working darker as we head further in. Go down here. This side of the tree has at least light hints, which we will then probably cover over with some more dark later on. And we can work into this wet stuff down at the bottom. And there is a little bit of a light area here. Um, this one. run those into each other. Okay, and the rest is fairly dark. So I'm just taking again, I'm using up this is painful, using up the end of this blue, that's all kind of in this edge here, putting in some uh, raw umber to get my darker color. And just coming in. I'm not too worried, I'm letting it be fairly Kind of, uh, what do you call it? I don't know. Not worried too much about the actual strokes. I want it to be loose and we're going to have leaves in there later anyway. So, uh, yeah. Add some more hints of color in here. It's nice for it to be dark, but you don't want it to just be kind of one, one shade. Bit more of this dark color again, blue, raw umber, work our way down to the bottom. Just touch up a few of these spots. Okay, and what I'm gonna do, I think, as we're still wet and wet, I'm making up some more of this dark mixture. And we are going to put some of that in wet and wet just to do some of the shadows. So like there's here, it actually goes quite far. And then this, there's like a little bit of a line between there. Just build up the color, because we can do it while it's still drying. Go really dark, probably in the corner here. And this is still a little wet, so I'm going to go add in some color on the tops. Add in 
adding some more branches. Going lighter color again, yellow ochre raw amber. Let's do some in here because this kind of like a few like hanging down. There is a little bit like out here. Okay. All right, at this point, I think I'm gonna let the tree dry. And then, like I said, we'll deal with the, the, brand, the foliage later and we'll do it wet and wet um, to most like in here for sure and some different wet and wet and dry spots. So we'll kind of play around with that. All right, you guys, we will start over with this zebra here. So I'm just gonna use oh, yellow ochre. Um, don't really have a clean spot, so just put it there. And just gonna go light wash. Cause he kind of has these, I'm just using a tiny bit of Hansi yellow. It's kind of golden colors going on. Gonna grab my rag. Maybe a bit more, Hansa. Perfect. And then for his back leg, can use some ultramarine and some raw umber. probably go over that again to bring out that shadow some more okay so we'll kind of do the same thing on the other one this one this is Hansa yellow and some I'm gonna bring in some burnt sienna and I'm just trying to water it down quite a bit um, so they have that tinge but not too much Okay, back one, I'm gonna do blue. There we go. Maybe a little bit down here. Just kind of bring some more more color in because it's quite like washed out. Okay. All right, I'm gonna deal with the tree foliage or at least the wet and wet part of it. So I'm taking, um, I'm gonna be using up most of the rest of my blue and I'm gonna mix it in here. And then my raw umber needing to fill a bunch of these actually, the raw embers get low too. Bit more blue, okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna use this and then I'm gonna be putting in some sap green. So we'll kind of have a dark color plus some green and I'm just going back to my bigger brush and I'm just gonna clean it off, clean water and we will go like that bit in here, bit in here. That's probably all the wet and wet will do. Um, and then the rest out here, maybe out here a little bit. Yeah, the rest will be um, dry brush. So just putting some greens in with that dark color. It's very watery, so I think I need a lot more pigment which is difficult because I'm running out of paint. If this does run out, I'll just switch to cobalt, which I probably should have been doing anyway. Uh, adding in a tinge of green. I'm gonna deal with that because that is not good at all. And it needs to be quite a bit darker up there. here if 
Okay. There's a bit of a wet spot up here. I'll just put a bit in there. All right. I think what I'll do is use this, um, you know, tree, the, the blue with raw umber color and just kind of bring that down. Put in a bit more green in some areas. Some dark, again, ultramarine, raw umber. Okay, and then deal with this watery part at the bottom again. Just kind of cleaning off my brush and picking up some of the water, pushing some of it down into another contour here. Okay, so yeah, we will probably leave that like that. And then we'll add in a uh, dry brush later. All right, while we wait for the rest of the stuff to dry, I'm going to add in a bit of some splatter effects down. Boy, my palette is kind of a mess. Normally I have like some warm, <laughs> a couple wells for warm and I just have like all these blue grays. Not been thinking very strategically. So just adding some splatters. So I'm just doing quite a like a watery mix and then tapping. Some of these spots are going to be bigger where my brush is actually touching. Some of them not so much. I'll take a little brush. Detail brush comes to a fine point and I'm just going to on some of these Bring out a few blades. A little bit of blue. This is just from my dirty palette. And remember, I, I, I forgot that this is all going to be in shadow here. Um, so I'm going to put a bit more out here because yeah, this tree's shadow is going to be covering a lot of this area, which we'll go over after. We can do the shadows of the, the zebras. So not crazy dark in the picture but they're there Put a little bit of greens in the green. Okay. All right, we'll go back to the zebras. 
So I'm just going to be using a bit of blue. I actually have some here that I'll just use because I'm running out in my well. And we're just going to do this one, the shadowed areas, back of the leg, this whole leg. Now, this is the part where because it's a uh, I'm just taking a clean brush and blending that edge. Um, it's just because of the curves on the animal, um, having it be you know a hard edge would look kind of weird. Okay, here. Okay, now time to blend all that. Cleaning off my brush, wiping it on a rag. Especially in here. I'm just gonna add in a few earthy colors. So this is raw umber. And here too much. All right. Now the other one, the other zebra, I don't want to go as much blue. There's just a tiny bit of blue. Oh, so you can see it's mostly brown. It's probably more than I wanted. I wanted a little bit of blue. There, okay, here, and here, probably too much. And then here, and here. I don't know if I should blend too much of this because it actually almost looks nice you know, with the shapes standing out. So I might just leave it like that. Let that dry and then we'll do some stripes. All right, I'm gonna deal with some of the tree branches up here, I mean the leaves. Um, so I'm using, this is my first nice brush I ever got. Um, it, it was nice, it's a synthetic brush, but um, I've kind of, it, a, it didn't hold up super well, and um, B, I've kind of abused it a little bit. And so I'm actually trying to work it in more now so that it's really kind of quite used um, so that I can use it for this kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna try to do is just kind of like splay it apart and use as much as I can the different parts of it. Sometimes I've put like a clip in it to hold it apart. Um, in this case, I won't. So we will just kind of go like this. As I, you know, do more of this, I think it will, it kind of then gets more and more personality. It starts to kind of be that brush, putting some yellow in here, actually warmer yellow I think would be better. Don't want to put too much color, I mean uh, too much pigment, because I want that kind of dry brushy look. It's not very, it's not dry brush. Um, but if I put too much water in, it'll just kind of be smooth. So I'm just in my palette, just kind of jamming it down so that then it's splayed a little more. All right, I think I need some darks to contrast those lighter greens. So I'm really getting to the <laughs> end of this blue. It's a good way to clean out the 
clean out the pan before I fill it up, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right, same thing, kind of really jamming it. Don't want to be too repetitive in my motions. So trying to vary them up. All right, some more dark, a little darker. I'm actually just using some neutral tint for this just because I'm too lazy to make up another one. Okay, I think that's probably good. We're probably probably verging on having overdone it anyway. This probably needs a bit more shadow right in here. Oh, this brush is so um, so much more scratchy compared to the other ones that I have, which is why it got demoted to you know the the foliage brush. All right, I'm gonna do the shadow area down here. So I've used up most of my blue to make up this blue and raw umber uh, mixture. And we're just gonna go in and put it in. Leave a few spots for where, you know, bits and pieces are kind of coming through the branches. And then I want it to kind of blend in with the tree part that's already here. A few little, probably should be using a smaller brush for this. I'll just try to use the tip, be more intentional about that. Perfect. All right, let's do the stripes on the zebras. So for that, I'm gonna to switch to my pointed brush again, and I'm gonna use what's left here of this mixture of blue, ultramarine, and uh, raw umber. Because it's kind of gonna be a black, but I don't want to go, I don't want it to be like a perfect, a true black. So. Switching over pictures here. And go here. I don't think I've ever done something like this before. This is interesting. They're really fascinating, these stripes. Like, just the, the patterns. It's pretty crazy what is in creation to see and enjoy. All the, I don't know, the diversity Very thick stripes here at the bottom. And they get quite uh, busy here around the face. To the eye. Okay, 
little bit of raw umber because this is more of like a brown color. I'm just going to kind of bring out some of his mane. Here, a little bit of an ear. Okay, tail. There's little bits in here. These legs too. And then the zebra behind. Okay, the guy behind will do similar. All right. Gonna take this same mixture, I still have it here, and I'm just adding a bit more brown and yellow, uh, yellow ochre. I just, I noticed like in the further away one, the stripes are a little more, a little more brown and muted than blue. <sighs> All right, this is like a lot of concentration. This one is so different. Stripes on this guy. A little bit on the tail. It's interesting how they're similar in many ways, kind of how they come down. It's like they collect here, kind of in the middle, but then different too. He has much, like, much more muted, uh, I don't know, not crazy strong stripes on his legs, which is interesting. All right, ear. Main. Okay, that's probably good. I'm gonna add a touch more blue here. There's not really stripes, but it is darker. I feel like the his chin could use a little more like that. Uh, tail, just bring the tail out a little more, especially just the bottom. Like that. Yeah, I'm really liking that. Okay, bring out a few more kind of like little details in here. very light. Um, I'm going to go back and do that tree that we have back here, but I just want it to be super light. Just want it to suggest it basically. Okay. Perfect. Uh, just gonna add in a bit of stuff in here. Just 
because there's not really any anything that way. I'm just putting down some color and then smearing it with my finger just so that it's not really strong hard edge. And a bit of orange. Yeah, pretty happy with that. We'll put a few birds out here, kind of flying low. And I think we'll sign it and be done. Thanks, you guys. Hope that was helpful for you. Um, yeah. I always appreciate you guys who watch and uh, appreciate your comments for those of you who leave those. So if you have any questions, suggestions, things you'd like to see, let me know. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video.